So that's the enzyme. Um, that's the protease. And before I jump into my graduate research, I'm just going to walk through a few tools that I think are, are germane to understanding this discussion because understanding um, someone's scientific research involves understanding the background, it involves understanding the question being asked, but it also requires understanding the techniques and the methods being used. So I am going to start with um, an SF9 insect cell expression system. So you have a, a complex organism like a human or a rat, but you just want to study and characterize one enzyme. Well, how do you do that? What I'm about to show you uh, is analogous when I was doing this. Um, in my mind, it was analogous to farming. Shout out to Irv Gotti. Farming. It means you're, 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 you're growing something and you're harvesting it. So you're interested in the one enzyme, one enzyme in this rat has it, it, its body contains thousands of, of enzymes and proteins, but you're interested in just one. What you can do scientifically is you can isolate the DNA sequence for that, that enzyme that you're interested in. You can insert that into a, um, um, an E. coli. You can uh, grow up that plasmid and then you can create a virus. It's called a baculovirus, um, a recombinant baculovirus. Once you create that baculovirus, you, um, what you do is you grow um, an insect cell line, SF9 insect cells, and you infect those cells with the baculovirus, right? And then what happens is after uh, about two days, depending upon the titer of the virus, Titer is just another word for concentration. You can get those insect cells to express your protein in um, massive quantities. And that was my job in the lab in addition to my research project. So it's called an SF9 overexpression system. So you create a virus with the, the protein of interest, you infect your insect cells, um, and then you harvest the protein from those cells by busting them open and creating a cytosol. For a visual, so you guys can see what it's like to grow the cells, um, what you do, the way you do that is you um, purchase an orbital shaker. Uh, this is a, um, an orbital shaker from Innova. We had, um, we had a big one like this and we had a small one. And those flasks on the inside of that orbital shaker contain medium and they contain uh, the insect cells. So this spins around, those cells are spinning around continuously, uh, dividing until you infect them with the virus. And then two days later, they become nice and plump. And then you bust those cells open. Um, I won't get into how I did that, but you create a cytosol. And then what you do at that point is you pass that cytosol over um, a column. Um, in, in our lab, we did a lot of column chromatography. And all that I'm going to say here is that what you're trying to do is you're using a solid, um, a stationary phase matrix here represented by the blue. You're putting your cytosol with your protein on over the top. And you're using that stationary phase to isolate um, purified protein. So that's what we're doing. That's what we did. Um, and this was one of the basic techniques of my graduate advisor's lab was generating massive amounts of this protein in vitro so we could study its activity, so we could study its biochemistry, and so we could study its how it interacted with other proteins 